The next type of selection I would like to talk about are what uh, I refer to as the automated selections. These are selections that try to figure out something about the image for you and help you quickly make a selection of something specific. And so the magic wand tool will select areas of similar color. The quick selection tool will select areas of similar color, pattern, and texture. And the object selection tool will try to figure out what the object that you are trying to select is and make a quick selection of it. So let's demo these. In our previous video, I made a magic wand selection of this statue, the head of a statue. I want to keep that selection so that I can show you how to refine the edge of it. So I'm going to leave it there and we will use the other selection tools in our different, uh, on our different pictures. And so we want to make sure that there are no active selections in any of these. So do Command or Control D or Select Deselect and make sure that the other images that you're using do not have any active selections. And so we'll go in the order of the textbook. We need to find the automated selections. They should be the fourth tool down on your tools panel. Again, if they're not there, always check the three buttons at the bottom of the tools panel to see if you can find it. Mine are all present. So we have the object selection tool, the quick selection tool, and the magic wand tool. We're gonna use the magic wand tool first. The magic wand tool works by clicking an area of pixels and then Photoshop will select all the pixels around it that are the same color or within the same range of colors. And so if I wanted to select just the top of this ice cream cone, I could click and see if it would select. However, in this case, um, a lot more than the ice cream cone was selected, right? So why does that happen? If we look at the options bar across the top of the screen, the tolerance should be set to 32. That's the default tolerance for the magic wand tool. When it was set to 120, it was picking up way more colors. So now when we click the ice cream, we get almost all of the colors that are just in the ice cream cone. We also can say that all the colors must be contiguous, meaning if I click the ice cream cone, I only want reds in the picture that are continuously connected to the ice cream cone. When we do this, you can see that the ice cream cone example in the background that's blurred out, it's not touching the ice cream cone, so it didn't select that. You can also see that we got a lot less uh, pixels selected because only that shade of red. There are two ways to grow this selection. You can hold shift and you can click another pink area of the ice cream cone and keep holding shift down and keep clicking to get more color. Or you can increase the tolerance. What if we made the tolerance 75? 75 is too much because now we're getting part of the cone and part of the background image. So maybe we try 50. Always deselect. And if you don't find one that works, like some images it won't work, you can go back to, I think that did actually a pretty good job. Um, you can go back to holding shift to grow your selection, to add to your selection. And what you'll wanna do is keep clicking all the way around the outside of your image until you get all of the reds in the image. Now you might get to a point where you have 95% of everything selected, like I have here, and that would be a nice rough quick selection. You can then combine that with other tools like the lasso tool to add to your selection. If we zoom in here, I can hold shift to add to the selection. It doesn't matter that I don't have the magic wand tool selected. And if I make a lasso selection, a rough selection around those pixels, they get added to the selection that I have. And so because the outline of my ice cream cone is already selected, I can use the lasso tool to get all these little itty bitty parts that are hanging out inside quickly selected by making a big rough selection. I'll have to come back and clean up that edge there. But you can see how we can use two or more selection tools to continue making a selection. I'm gonna deselect here. The next tool I wanna show you is the quick selection tool, which is probably a better option for this. The quick selection tool will allow you to make quick selections of big areas. You can make the, the the selection brush bigger or smaller using your right bracket key to make it bigger or your left bracket key to make it smaller. What happens is when you click with the 
the quick selection tool, it tries to figure out what you're trying to select by looking at the texture and the color of the image. So you can see that the ice cream cone is in focus and the background is not. And so it quickly figured out that I was trying to select the ice cream cone. If you hold shift, you can slowly try to grab more and more of the outside of the image. Now my brush is too big, so I would have to make it smaller to try to get this little piece that's popping out over here. You can also click and drag, be careful, you don't want to go too far, but it will allow you to click and drag to add to this selection. Now in this case, I might be trying to select the whole ice cream cone, so I might want to select all the way down to the bottom. You can see when I did that, I got a little bit too much of the background, so the Option key or the Alt key on a PC, if you hold that down, you can remove pixels from a selection. So I can click out here and slowly click back until I've snapped my selection back to just being the cone. Let's do the same image, but this time let's use the object selection tool. If you push and hold um, your automated selections, the first option in my version of Photoshop is the object selection tool. It works like the rectangular marquee tool. You're going to click and drag to make a rectangular marquee. Make sure that the object you're trying to select is in within the rectangle and then release. And Photoshop will try to figure out what the object is that's inside your rectangle and then it will select it. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is what selection tool do I use? There's there's never a right or wrong selection tool. You'll have to experiment. And so in this case, the object selection tool did a pretty good job, but then I would have to zoom in and I would have to fix this little area right here that was selected that shouldn't be selected. And I would have to add the little thumb down here back in if I wanted the thumbs to be part of the selection. Let's repeat these one more time on a different image. Let's use it on this one here. So let's use the magic wand tool. Maybe we want to replace the sky in this image. So if we, let's put it back at default, 32. If I click, in this case, I want to point out two things. Um, there's a clear difference between the sky and the statue. So we should be able to use the magic wand tool to get the whole background. And so if we were to increase this from 32 to maybe 45, and then try the selection again, see how it got everything in the sky. However, there's a little gap right here that's not selected. That's because we have contiguous selected. So we can uncheck contiguous and try that one more time. And now we have selected the sky and the little gap. However, there are little flecks of white along the statue and we don't want those. So I think what I'll do is undo that, use a contiguous selection and then just zoom in hold shift to add to the selection and add that little gap. Okay, I'm going to deselect that. Let's do the same selection with the quick selection tool. So the quick selection tool can be used to select the statue or the sky. Pick which one you want. Since we just did the sky, I will use it to select the statue. So all you do is click or hold shift and click and drag. And you can see that it quickly snapped to the outline of the head of the statue. Do little small clicks or clicks and drags because you only want to add a little bit at a time. And if you go too far and have to undo, you don't want to have to undo. Every time you see the cursor moving from top to bottom, it's a new click and drag. And you can slowly add to your selection this way. And again, the selection tools are working really easy on this statue because there's a clear difference between the foreground and the background. But I went a little bit too far here, so I need to remove the pixels that are in that gap. So the first thing I have to do is make the cursor smaller than the gap, and then to remove the pixels, I'm gonna hit Option or Alt on a PC and click in that gap. Okay, let's try the Object Selection tool, and again, I haven't tested it on this, uh, but it seems to work it's relatively new, first of all, but it seems to work pretty good. So we want to make a rectangular marquee that's bigger than the object we're trying to select. And then we'll let go and we'll let Photoshop do its thing. And really quickly, it did a pretty good job. I need to clean up the bottom and the side edges and remove the little gap, but not too shabby for 
a one second rough selection. I would like you to practice using these three selection tools. When you feel confident with your abilities, move on to the next video and we'll talk about refining selections.